mistakes you make, that's all right, that's okay. You can think that you're in life when you're really dressed in pie. Did y'all see my mashup I made today? Well, I was lip syncing to that, but then the caption was heart been broke so many times. I, I was like, <laughs> all right. Okay, guys, we ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. Beauty standard. Society has always been obsessed with beauty. Turning on the TV or checking social media, one is quickly exposed to advertising for anti-aging products or swimsuits on stick-thin models. It is clear to see that there is a universal fascination with obtaining beauty, whatever that ideal may be. This obsession with beauty has birthed what one may call the standard of beauty. You should always be in makeup. You should always be uh, have your hair done. You know, you should always look um, ready. You know, when you step out of the, the house. That like people expect certain things out of girls and specific things, like they're supposed to be girly and wear a lot of skirts and a lot of bright colors. Um, Ridiculous, unrealistic, yeah. disgusting, subjective, crazy. objective. They, mm, a lot of the times they apply specifically to like what sex you are. Like males don't have nearly as many, and I would say like if you were born a female, they apply these, like, standards to you that, like, are fairly unrealistic. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so I feel like we have all different types of beauty standards. We have, like, in general, beauty standards for women where you need to kind of look like an Instagram model. Um, so your waist needs to be snatched, and you need to have, like, just really big boobs, and you need to be able to have clear skin all the time, even if you're not wearing makeup. Um, you need to look like you just rolled out of bed and basically you're a goddess. Body image issues can begin at the age of five. One out of four kids in the United States has tried dieting by the age of seven. Adolescents are especially vulnerable to bad body image due to biological changes that come with undergoing puberty. Sometimes they make me not like the way I look because I don't look like other people that are like subjectively pretty, like in the entire eye of America. Um, yeah, I can kind of say the same thing. A lot of the guys on like the media that I see, like a movie or a TV show are like hyper-masculine, big, strong men. And you know me, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a small man. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I get a little self-conscious, but that's okay. Screw American body standards. Oh, well, I guess... What about me? No, yeah. No, I guess, like, yeah, summer's a good example. Every, all my friends are like, bikini time, oh, and I'm like, no, I will stick to my one piece from Target with my swim shorts over them because I just don't want my body to be seen because all my friends are like... <laughs> super skinny, and I'm just not. And I just, I sometimes, that can be a little annoying, so I just cover up my body. And then thinness was all, always something that was prized and, and it's funny because when I look back at pictures of myself now, by my current standards, I was pretty thin. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, uh, you know, my friends were all, uh, maybe not my friends, but like rude kids were telling me that I was fat and things like that. And it's like, that's the things you remember. Mm -hmm. It's not the things like where people are like, oh, you look great. Yeah. I don't know, man. Social media is really not not healthy for body image because I mean whatever you're insecure about someone else has it like perfectly yeah. and like it's not that hard to find not that hard to like find things to make you insecure about yourself. I think there's like different levels of it um, where like the Instagram world and kind of that social media pressure is creating some of this like impossible standards um, where just everything's like perfectly photoshopped or that ability to like capture a moment of looking um, but I think there's I feel this way, at least not despite my own experience, where there's trends away from being like one type of beautiful. And I think that's come from like lots of different races being portrayed and like sizes being portrayed in media. Um, still far from perfect, but I think there's like less pressure, so. Well, I mean, it's I guess it's obvious that the media has like a specific type of person and like look that and style that they find that is like subjectively all around beautiful but it does leave like so many people out of it like it's like the specific type of person that is beautiful no matter what and the rest of us are just like well um, here we are yeah I would say now even though the media is taking better steps for representation of all bodies and 
you know, everything and like that, they tend to portray like this kind of like hyper feminine, hyper masculine type uh, body view. Um, I was like so immune to them, probably until high school. Like I can remember in junior high wearing the same, like I can't believe my parents let me out of the house. Same like cut off denim jeans and like a t-shirt every single day. And just like didn't, like did not care. Was like kind of unfazed by boys or anybody's opinion of me. But I also didn't have like style either, if that makes sense. Like I was just like, just putting on clothes and like living my life. Um, and then high school, I think I started noticing things more. And I also wasn't like, I was like kind of comfy with my body, but I didn't have, I didn't have like a positive or negative relationship with my body. It was just very neutral. Like I didn't really think about it too much. Um, and my parents didn't have very much money. So like buying clothes wasn't really like a thing. Like I recognized that I didn't have like the coolest clothes, but I didn't care as much either. So it was kind of this like both the end. Um, I'm trying to think of what else for high school. Oh, I just never, like, I was never that girl. My mom didn't wear much makeup, and so, like, no one ever really, like, taught me, like, makeup or anything like that. And that's still true today. Like, I just wear mascara, and that's just what I wear. But I, like, like that now. Now that's, like, a choice that I've made. Whereas before, I was like, oh, should I be, like, trying to wear makeup? Like, some girls curl their hair. How do I do that? Um, so. Yeah, so they didn't, standard, I didn't feel the pressure instead of standards. I think I felt the pressure of peers a little bit, but even that, I didn't feel super heavily. So, would you say I grew up? My early childhood was in the nineteen seventies mm -hmm. when it was pretty much all natural hair, mm -hmm. and so that to me feels like the norm. Right. And and deviating from that uh, feels like why why would anyone expect people to not have their natural mm -hmm. hair, right? And so um, you know, I I think that because I am of a certain age, mm -hmm. uh, I do kind of have more of a historical perspective. And to me, mm -hmm. the changes that are happening seem positive, although we're, we're not there yet. Right. We're not there yet because we still live in a Lucas society and we still, there is a certain privilege mm -hmm. uh, that goes with, you know, certain beauty standards often associated with whiteness, um, thinness, mm -hmm. uh, hair standards, things like that. The exposure to media now is different from what we've experienced in the past. There are so many stereotypes and societal expectations surrounding beauty and intelligence. I think they're like evolving, one, and I think like beauty standards just gender-wise is like becoming a little bit more mixed or like um, it's more okay for like men to be not as like masculine looking, same for women, so I think like it's hopeful for me in that sense. I think as far as, one thing I'm kind of jealous of is like fashion or just like this idea of cool. Like you all can thrift and be considered cool. Like I feel like there was a time where that was not the, no. Yeah, no, you had to go to Forever 21. Like you could not shop anywhere else. Um, so I think things have gotten kind of like broader, but even in that cool spectrum, you still have to like look a certain way. And like you have to pose like with one leg straight and then like one leg bent in front of you. So it makes you look like really long. And I just feel like there are a lot of hacks that you guys have, but I feel like you guys developed those hacks in order to like fit this type of image that yeah. I don't think we always had in our heads. I definitely see where you're coming from. It's difficult to like love the body you're in and like the way you look when you have to look at other people and they like might look the way that you want to look or the way you used to look or the way you could look if you change something about your lifestyle. And so it's just like, I want to be you, but you can't because you're, you're you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. So, as a teacher, would you say that, or how would you say that beauty standards sort of affect the students that you interact with on a daily basis? Yeah, I think Crosstown's really unique. I think Crosstown, as I'm saying, it's like the island of misfit toys because there's like so many different types of people here that there isn't like one cohesive standard of what is like cool or normal. I watch people do a ton of different stuff. So when I work here with students and I kind of see the I guess this closing in effect that going to a school with boys or going to a school with like these different um, like characteristics can have on you, I can kind of see like the effects of that. You're not as open. Like there have been some times I've talked with like groups of girls and they're just so like amazing and just blah, blah, blah. And then like maybe like a male teacher or like a male presence will come and it's just like slowly like ah, and like they'll try to like bend towards what they want that teacher to think of them or feel about them. Um, and it makes me sad. It really makes me sad. Cross Town is unique because I've watched 
so many kids be really comfortable in their own skin in ways that I um, was not as a teenager or wasn't even like self-aware enough to do. Like I don't think I had a sense of style yet then and so I love that like I'm around so many teenagers who like feel comfortable exploring what they look like and what they enjoy doing um, and I do like chatting would you say, okay would you say the beauty industry like tries to purposely create beauty standards and insecurities within society so they can sell products to capitalize oh definitely yes. definitely yeah, talk about that a little bit I mean, I don't know, it happens all the time, like even recently, like those stupid metabolism drops that were like trending on TikTok that were literally like making people sick, but people were still taking them. They like took them off the market because they're horrible because people are just trying to use them to get skinny. And it's yeah. just like everything is perpetuated, like in our minds even, whether it's subconscious or consciously, like we're always shown these skinny people and these skinny models and these outfits that you see on these skinny people on Target ads and whatever you're looking at, just it's always skinny people in a certain type of body type in these clothes. And so then you look at them and you don't have that body type and it's like, oh, well, can I even wear that because I don't have that body type? And then even if you try it on, like it still doesn't look exactly the way it looks on other people because it's made for a different body type and it's just like telling you you can't look good in clothes unless you're skinny as a stick.